As I get older, it becomes incredibly rare that I find a book series that captivates me and takes over my whole life for a time like a very small handful of my favorite series have. If you're an avid reader, you'll find that every now and then one series will stand distinctly apart from the rest and make you feel things you never have before, will make you think about literature in general in a completely different way and will, for a time, grant you the magic and wonder you once felt as a child. At this point, I've read hundreds of books and escaped into incredible worlds, characters, and stories, but never have I experienced something quite like Harry Potter. I am 31 years old and I've just read Harry Potter for the first time, much to all of social media's and my other three co-hosts' surprise. <laughs> During my journey through these books, I live tweeted my reactions and kept my co-hosts up to date on where I was, and it was so much fun to share this whole experience with all of you. I legitimately did not know that Harry Potter was this well loved by literally all of the people I interact with. On a regular basis. I knew that it was an insanely popular series, but until I read them, I figured it was just some kind of pop cultural phenomenon or pure 90s nostalgia. I want to get into why I decided to pick up this series so recently, but first, a little backstory for you to know where I was coming from. When I was really young and kids were starting to get into Harry Potter, my mom decided that it was something that our family wouldn't be participating in. And she had her reasons that I definitely disagree with, and I undoubtedly felt a little left out of the thing that all my friends and other kids my age were getting into. By the time I got a little bit older and could decide what I wanted to read for myself, honestly, I had found other interests and didn't really understand the hype over Harry Potter as a franchise. And over the next few years, there was Harry Potter merchandise in just about every single store you could possibly walk into. Still is, I think. I figured it was just overpopularized and was just kind of one of those things that couldn't possibly be as good as all the marketing made it out to be. So I mostly ignored it. I saw some of the movies in college, but mostly casually watched them while getting drunk with my friends, and didn't really remember a whole lot about them other than that they were fine and fun, and that I probably never really needed to see them ever again. Over the next few years, I carried the opinion that it was just something that I had missed out on when I was young, like Pokemon or Dragon Ball Z, and that I wouldn't find much enjoyment in as an adult. Fast forward to two months ago or so when I built my high-end gaming PC and I wanted to try out a big AAA game on it and bought Hogwarts Legacy because it looked like a really great recreation of the Harry Potter world that I could get into in a fun way as an adult. I'm going to be doing a separate review for Hogwarts Legacy, but I'll just say it really speaks to the scope of the Harry Potter franchise and how prevalent it is in pop culture and all across the spectrum of various media that when someone like me, who at best felt extremely indifferent about the Harry Potter franchise, felt a wave of deep nostalgia and childlike wonder when I walked into Hogwarts for the first time and the sweeping orchestral music plays, or when you fly on a broom for the first time. That was magical. Just from being in the same vicinity of the Harry Potter franchise my whole life made me feel a sense of excitement for exploring the castle and its grounds, and I found that I wanted to know more about this wonderful world of magic. So I decided that I should try reading the first book and just see what happens. Luckily, Audible had a deal and they might still have it where you can listen to the book for free with a subscription. I fully expected the book to not quite work for me since I'm much older than its intended demographic and would probably find that it was simplified to an extent that just wasn't fun to read as an adult, especially for someone who reads the kind of fantasy books that I do. I'm not sure if I've ever been more wrong about anything in my life. Just from the first couple chapters, I instantly knew that I would be reading 
every single book in the series one after another. And I had one of the most wonderful reading experiences I've ever had in my entire life. I ate up book after book, listening to them at a slower speed than I usually do to savor every moment of this very magical adventure. I fell in love with the characters so quickly and just wanted to hang out with them for hours at a time. It was also a really cool experience because I was playing Hogwarts Legacy at the same time. Often I would listen to the book while I played the game in front of me, and it was so much fun to hear about things in the book that I would then see on the screen. And let me tell you, that game stays very, very true to the source material. Taking the lore straight from the books and the exact visuals of the movies, I would really get excited whenever I would hear about a spell in the books that I was actively using in the game, or hear about a magical beast that I had just tamed and placed in my garden or fought in the Forbidden Forest. Every book felt like a completely unique adventure, and at the start of every entry in the series, I would get so excited to find out what they were going to be doing at Hogwarts this year. It is escapist fantasy at its best, and Rowling has a masterful way of fully immersing the reader and making them feel like they are there at Hogwarts, away from parents and the troubles of the real world, to instead navigate schoolyard drama and fight evil wizards and uncover ancient mysteries deep in the heart of Hogwarts. I found it so wild that this series can be enjoyed just as much by a guy in his 30s as it can by a kid in his preteens. The story is absolutely timeless, and I truly believe that it will go down as one of the greatest fantasy series of all time among the works of Tolkien, Jordan, and C.S. Lewis. Its themes and story arcs can appeal to anyone of any age, and I think I may have even gotten significantly more from it as an adult than I would have as a kid. Although I do think that if I had read this as a kid, it would have definitely become <laughs> my entire personality and I would have been even more of a dork about it than I am right now. <laughs> I love that the books grew with the reader, starting you out in an overwhelming world of wonder and magic and just let you sit in that feeling for a couple books before the subject material became progressively more dark and serious, which I think is really cool because if you started these books when you were 10, if you followed the release schedule, you'd be about 20 by the time the subject material became admittedly too dark for a child, which I think is a really cool strategy. It would have felt like you were growing up with Harry and the gang, and that must have been a really fun experience for readers. However, even the first book explored deep themes of loneliness and feeling like you don't have a place in the world, but also the highs of friendship and loyalty and finding somewhere to call home. As most of our audience knows, I'm the co-host on our podcast that tends to get pretty emotional when it comes to certain books, and I never really shy away from shedding some tears when that moment arrives. Uh, up until now, the King Killer Chronicles was the series that usually had me choking up the most, but I kid you not, I just about cried all the way through this series, especially at the very beginning of the series when Harry is feeling all alone and finding out about what happened to his parents and his longing for some kind of loving parental figure in his life. And also at the end when the found family that he's worked so hard to accumulate starts dying or being hurt, I was actually really surprised how many people die throughout this series and Rowling tackles that in the perfect way. But it wasn't all sad tears. There were so many moments of happy tears where Harry has been pushed around the whole book and finally gets a leg up, or when he feels extremely low and receives the kind words that he needed from a friend or mentor at the time. Some moments were so incredibly sweet that I just wanted to sit in that scene forever. So here's the crazy thing, with as many books as I've read, I can honestly say I've never felt this way about a series before. I've had my top three favorite series pretty firmly planted for years now, but I will not be surprised one bit if it knocks one of those out to make its own spot in the top three. If nothing else, it is definitely without a doubt in my top five currently. I cannot stop thinking about these books and it's actually 
really difficult to move on and read anything else after the highs of this series. Until we have to read something for the podcast here soon, I've actually <laughs> I've actually started rereading select books in the series. I know I just read them, but I'm like, I just, I just need more. Uh, I've also now started watching the movies and I'm loving seeing some of my favorite scenes come to life on the screen. And yes, I pictured all of the characters exactly how they are in the movies because I had watched them a decade ago, even if I don't quite remember them. Uh, I've also seen all sorts of pictures and clips and whatnot online. So it was really fun to have a bit of a visual aid while reading these. I loved how Rowling was able to pull off a magic system and world that is very soft in nature, often being used as it needs to be for the plot to advance, but there was never a moment where I rolled my eyes and thought it was too easy of a fix for their current predicament. Okay, maybe there was like one or two, but still, it was really great. I typically hate MacGuffins and plot conveniences, of which there are quite a few, like the Marauder's Map and the Time Turner, but they're handled so well and everything feels really earned and like it has relevance to the plot and place in this world. And mostly, they're just fun. And like Brandon Sanderson says, when in doubt, err on the side of awesome, which Rowling definitely did. I was also surprised to find that there are actually rules and a kind of logic to this magic system, even if it does bend them from time to time. I love the feeling of never fully knowing what is possible at Hogwarts and that at any moment some magical thing could get revealed or introduced that would really shake things up in the story. I'd even go so far as to say that this is the first magic system I've read that truly feels magical and wonderful rather than a code to be broken or a math problem to be solved. I was also surprised to realize how many things from this series are fundamental building blocks for other series. My number one favorite series is The Dresden Files, and it is clear as day that Jim Butcher took heavy inspiration from Harry Potter in crafting his works. Even though Dresden Files is definitely meant for a much older audience, I think that if you read Harry Potter as a kid and need something really similar but are now into slightly more complex and definitely more adult fantasy, Dresden Files is the obvious choice. Even the way both of these series tug on your heartstrings in really similar ways and extremely similar themes of good and evil, morally great heroes, loneliness, friendship, and sacrifice. Harry Dresden is very much a what if everything hadn't ended up perfect for Harry Potter in the end kind of character. Uh, the magic system is really similar but also definitely more defined in the Dresden Files and the two stories almost seem like they could exist in the same world besides a few key differences, of course. But by far the best things about this series are its characters and its plot. I fell in love with the characters basically from the moment I met them and I just wanted to read about them doing literally anything. And that's how you know you have great characters. When it doesn't matter in the slightest what they're doing relevant to the plot, you just want to spend as much time with them as possible no matter what. I became extremely attached to these characters and they are without a doubt the main reason why I'll be rereading this series for many, many years to come. The characters were also surprisingly complex. Characters that you think are just the big bad guy and evil for evil's sake actually have many layers and duality to their personalities. They're never just one thing. Even many of the heroes who seem like they're doing things for the love of other characters or for the greater good very much have their own motivations and plans within plans. Nothing took me by surprise more than this and I loved every little reveal that we got along the way. With those reveals came an amazing plot that made me constantly on the edge of my seat waiting for this next big turn of events and was expertly executed. Now, are there a couple plot holes and loose threads? Yeah, there definitely are. But I think that overall it was an awesome, 
classic hero's journey told through a modern lens that didn't fall back on as many tropes as I thought there would be, honestly, and will go down as one of my favorite stories ever told, I'm sure of it. So I'm not sure what else I can say in a spoiler-free way, so I'd like to jump into a couple spoilers here in a minute. But first, I'll just say I'm so incredibly glad to have read this series. As I mentioned before, it's been one of the best reading experiences of my life, and I'm so excited to read these books over and over for years to come. It's truly a perfect story, and I have almost nothing bad to say about it at all. Like I said, it has its plot holes and things about the magic and world that don't quite make sense, but honestly, none of that really bothered me. I was so immersed in the story moment to moment that if there are things that don't add up, a lot of them I probably didn't catch and just flat out enjoyed my ride all the way through. However, I was really disappointed to find out that she has no plans to ever revisit this series. She's such an incredibly talented author that I'm really surprised she didn't go on to make more books either happening at other times in Hogwarts history or side stories taking place during the main narrative of this series. I do understand though that she probably got out while she was ahead and decided to leave her legacy with the golden glow of an extremely well done series. I know there's The Cursed Child, but everyone has told me not to read it. Uh, I'll probably just look up a synopsis so I know you know, where everybody kind of ends up, but people have told me that they don't even consider that book canon, so I don't know. And then real quick before I go into spoilers, I just wanted to officially announce that we will be doing a Harry Potter episode series on the channel probably pretty soon, where we will be going book by book with full series spoilers along the way called Potter Watch. I'm so excited to reread the series with my co-hosts who also love Harry Potter, and I can't wait to get their takes on certain scenes and story beats. Uh, and with that being said, I'll give you your spoiler warning now, so if you haven't read the series in its entirety, then it's best to click away now. We'll obviously go deeper into spoilers and whatnot in our Potter Watch episodes, but I just wanted to chat about a couple things that happened that I really enjoyed. So first off, I think my favorite book was either The Half-Blood Prince or The Deathly Hallows, although I do really love books one and three as well and could see myself revisiting those whenever I just need a quick read. I don't really remember much from book two. I know I enjoyed it, but it just doesn't stick out for me that much. Uh, book five was a tough one for me. It was extremely well done and I definitely enjoyed it a lot but I really hated Umbridge and I know that I was meant to. Uh, I just feel like it was really hard to fully enjoy Hogwarts while she was around and it kind of killed a lot of the fun that was present in the other books, but it was a good stepping stone into getting us into, without a doubt, the darkest books in the series, uh, Half-Blood Prince and The Deathly Hallows. Also, she did add a really interesting and unique problem for everyone that we hadn't really seen before, and I legitimately had no idea how they were gonna get rid of her. I love the Half-Blood Prince because we get a ton of page time with Dumbledore, who is definitely my next favorite character after Harry, and I loved all the conversations the two of them had. I also really loved the mystery of who the Half-Blood Prince was. Literally, my last guess would have been that it was Snape, and there's just so many great moments in this book, like Harry and Ginny finally getting together, Tom Riddle's backstory, and Dumbledore's death was incredibly tragic and had me making puddles on the floor from tears. I didn't like piss myself or anything, or did I? And then there are way too many things to list about what I loved from the Deathly Hallows, but my God, what an incredible book. It really, really felt like Harry, Ron, and Hermione were on their own and couldn't expect any help from the outside. Matter of fact, they actively avoid and refuse help so that they don't tell people about their mission, which I think is kind of dumb. I think they probably could have and it would have been fine, but oh well. But the whole book felt dark and sinister, and I really didn't know how it was all going to end for Harry Potter. I'll get more into this book in a future video, but I will say the only thing that disappointed me a little about this book was that there are some threads that we don't get a lot of resolution to. And I would have loved at least a couple lines for each of the major characters saying, 
where they all ended up. Like, what happened to George after Fred died? It doesn't tell you. And where did Lupin and Tonks' son go until he moved in with Harry and Ginny 19 years later? It just doesn't tell you until you get to the epilogue and Harry's like, oh yeah, we should ask him to move in. But it's like, where has he been this whole time? Uh, and I also would have liked to seen where some of the other students and the Weasley parents ended up in life. And it, perhaps some of that was in there and I just missed it, but I just felt like we didn't get a whole lot of resolution for many of the characters. I also would have really liked to see more of a redemption arc with Draco Malfoy. I know he kind of had one, but I think he could have had a really cool 180 and him and Harry could have broken the whole Gryffindor versus Slytherin convention. I didn't really like his character, not because he was an antagonist, but just because he felt evil without a purpose. And I think that he could have had a better personal story if maybe halfway through the series, like during Goblet of Fire, uh, if he and Harry had become more like frenemies and then kind of graduated to like begrudging friends near the end and maybe allied up in the final book against Voldemort. Um, and again, I know there was kind of a, a little bit of a resolution there, but I don't think it was enough, honestly. As much as I loved all the heartbreaking moments in Half-Blood Prince and Deathly Hallows and all the moments where Harry finally gets close to someone like Sirius or Lupin who can kind of act like a surrogate father figure, I think the scene I hold in highest regard is actually from the first book. Harry gets his invisibility cloak and finds his way to the mirror of Erised, and for the first time, he sees his parents and the approval on their faces. Oh my gosh, I can't remember if this happens in the book, but in the movie, they like put their hands on his shoulder in the mirror while they look back at his in the real world, and I just about lost it. This was such an incredible bittersweet scene and really encapsulates what I love about Harry Potter's origin story. This extreme mistreatment of him through his entire upbringing, desperately wanting someone, anyone to love him and act like a parent. It speaks a lot to his character that he doesn't necessarily let this upbringing make him cynical or immediately distrustful of everyone. He just genuinely wants to find himself a family and feel like he belongs somewhere. Oh man, it's so sad and it leads to so many amazing scenes and really gives Rowling the chance to rip out our hearts over and over when those close to him die. The other best part about this scene is when Dumbledore shows up, but he's not there to scold Harry for sneaking out at night and looking at the mirror. He's there to sit with him and look at the mirror with him and tell him that he understands what Harry is feeling. This is also what I really love about Dumbledore. I was expecting him to be kind of this hard ass guy that runs the school and is trying to restrain Harry and his friends during their adventures throughout the castle. And I think that in any other story, he would have been that guy. But instead, he is an incredibly loving and caring man who genuinely wants the best for Harry, even if he knows that he does have to get Harry to the point where he dies in order to kill Voldemort, which is what I was referencing earlier when I said even the good characters have very complex personalities and kind of plans within plans. I also really loved how popular Harry was right off the bat. In some other series, it would seem very Mary Sue-ish, but it made total narrative sense here, and it still didn't automatically allow him to do whatever he wanted, although he did get quite a bit of the benefit of the doubt from most of the teachers because of it. But I just love the feeling of seeing him at his absolute lowest at the beginning of the story, being treated in a way that no human being ever should, and then basically coming home to Hogwarts and feeling like he has a place in the world. It was one of the most satisfying things throughout the whole series. And like I said, this is escapist fantasy at its very, very best. 
a couple other quick things before I go. Um, I loved, I loved how after Ron and Harry took the flying car to school, this sentient car just runs off and lives its best life in the Forbidden Forest. I think that that's absolutely hilarious that it's just somewhere out there living life. <laughs> and that's another thing I liked about the magic system and surprisingly didn't take me that long to get accustomed to was the soft magic of it all. Like, why can Arthur Weasley's car fly? Well, because it's enchanted, of course. Duh. And I love that I didn't really have to think about it too much and I could just enjoy the magic that was being presented to me in each scene. I also loved all the Quidditch matches. I never ever thought I would say that Quidditch was one of the coolest things I've ever read, even if the rules make no sense. I always used to kind of roll my eyes when I would see Quidditch merchandise or hear it talked about by people, but there's definitely a reason why it's such an integral part of the Harry Potter story, and I think the fast-paced matches were written extremely well. The last thing I'll mention is the epilogue. When I found out what Harry's youngest son's name was, it absolutely had me sobbing. And then to find out that his middle name is Severus, and that Harry said Snape was one of the bravest men he ever knew, it just completely broke me. It was incredible. It was awesome. Well, I'm probably going on pretty long by this point, so I should wrap it up so that I'm not editing forever, but I just want to say that this series legitimately changed the way that I view fantasy and character work and reading in general. I've never had such an immediate emotional reaction to a series, and I think that really speaks to the absolute mastercraft that is J.K. Rowling's writings. I didn't think I would find another series that would make me a super fan of something like this, and I'm so, so glad that I decided to read Harry Potter. This series absolutely wrecked me in the best possible way and made me feel things that, honestly, I didn't think I could feel from reading anymore. It was an incredible journey a captivating story about love, courage, and friendship, and an absolutely beautiful and utterly magical adventure. And I'm so, so glad I went on it. Well, thank you so much for watching this and joining me on my first journey through the wizarding world of Harry Potter. One of my favorite things was being able to share my thoughts with you guys along the way over on Twitter, and I loved all of your responses to my posts. If you missed my tweets about it, I recommend going to our Twitter page and click on media, as every post about Harry Potter is accompanied by a screenshot from where I was at the time in the audiobook. Those posts are a lot of fun and I had a great time making them. We've got a ton of Harry Potter content on the way. I'm gonna be talking to a couple people about the series as a whole on more of a general level. And then we'll be starting our Potter Watch series very soon where we'll be digging in deep to each book in the series and I just cannot wait for that. It's gonna be so much fun. If you're new here and would like to keep up with our Harry Potter content, then hit subscribe and the notification bell so that you know when new stuff comes up. We also have a Patreon where you can get some exclusive content, so definitely check that out if you want to support us in that way. And until next time, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. You're a wizard. And a big shout out to our first Night Angel tier patron, Shad Zaman. Thank you so much, man.